You may see a blank board, but that's because I'm going to give you guys a little cheeky um, freestyle introduction to radians. So, what are radians? You might have seen in your calculator, the two most common ways of measuring angles are degrees and radians. Now, radians is a much better way of measuring angles because it is unitless. Degrees are known as a planar angle. A planar angle that suggests that a whole circle is this 360 degrees. But who made it 360 degrees? It was fixed a long time ago by some geek who basically was like, look, 360 has a lot of factors here. You have one, two, three, four, five, 18, 90, 45. There's just so many factors that go into th uh, 360. But there's more reasons to that as well, most likely to do with the fact that it takes 365 days for the Earth to rotate around the sun, you know, 0 0.24, etc. So they basically said, look, 360 is much nicer to use than 365.24, whatever, whatever, whatever. So this was fixed a long time ago. And then, yeah, we can partition that into 360 mini pieces. But again, it's um, something that was made up. Who decided that a kilo is a kilo, okay? So these are all just measurements that were made up a long time ago. However, radians, not quite the case. A radian just measures, so a radian measures how much longer, how much longer the arc length, the arc length of a circle is relative to the radius. Okay? So forget about this 360 degrees for a second. Let's remind ourselves of some definitions of sectors, segments, etc. So here's my center. And we're going to look at a sector. A sector is basically a slice of cake in a circle, like this. You have the radius, and this is your arc length. Okay? A radian measures how many times bigger this is relative to this. So, for example, if I let this be 4, if that length is 4 and this length is 2, 4 is 2 times bigger than 2, so the angle here we would write is 2, okay? 2 times 2 is 4. Pretty cool, right? So let's go back to the original definition then. If I call this L, this is my radius, and I call this angle theta, aka theta, what we're saying is this times this is this. Simple. And this is our first definition when it comes to radians. The arc length of a circle is just r theta. Okay? If that's 4, this is 2, this is 2. Okay? Then what's interesting is if the angle here was 1, what would that mean? If I made this 1, if, what does 1 radian even mean? 1 radian basically says 1 times r is l, which just means that the radius is equal to the arc length. Yeah, if you let r equal 1, it just means the arc length equals, sorry, if you let theta equal 1, not r, if you let theta equal 1, the arc length equals the radius. Pretty cool, yeah? Um, if we're dealing with degrees, we could actually work out what 1 radian is then based on that situation. So if we're working in degrees, so we have this arc length here. If I call it r, and call this r, and this theta, what would that be in degrees? Now, in GCSE, to work out the arc length, you would work out the ratio between theta and 360 times 2 pi r which is the circumference of a circle, and we're saying that equals r. All right? So we're saying that ratio out of whole the 360 times the circumference of a circle, we're equating them. So that means these r's cancel, 
the 2 cancels the 360 to make 180. So we have theta times pi over 180 is 1 times by 180, and then we divide by pi. Now, if you type that in your calculator, it's a little bit less than 60 degrees. But just for this sake, guys, I'm just going to say it's about 60 degrees. OK, that's not exact. That's what approximation means. So one radian is about 60 degrees. But there is a better conversion for this. Let's take a look. Well, it's basically this. But I think that's good trivia for you guys. One radian is about uh, 60 degrees. So let's take a look at a semicircle. Because with a semicircle, you guys should know this straight away. What will the arc length of a semicircle be? Well, we know for a full circle, it's 2 pi r. Okay, 2 pi r, we're going to half that, pi r. Okay. So the radian, this angle is telling us how many times bigger this is compared to this. Okay, we'll call that theta. Theta times r is pi r. Theta times r is pi r. Okay, all the r's cancel, so theta is pi. So in a semicircle in radians, this angle here is pi. But we also know, so this is radians, that pi is 180 degrees. And there's our first conversion. Pi radians is 180 degrees, which allows us to work out or write down very common angles. Okay, what are the common angles we should know? Obviously, zero. Um, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. What else should we put uh, after that? Probably 180. 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360. These are the common angles. So if we know 180 is pi radians, yeah, so this is my deg, and this is my rad. Okay. So if 180 is pi, then when I double that, 360 is 2 pi. If I half that, 90 is pi over 2. Half of 90, 45, when you half a half is a quarter, so pi over 4. If I divide this by 3, I get 60, so I get pi over 3. And then if I half that, I get 30 degrees, which would be pi over 6. 270 could come from multiplying this 90 by 3, so 3 pi over 2. And then, it doesn't matter whether you're in degrees or radians. If the angle is 0, the radian is 0. And that's that. So, now that we know our values, let me show you guys how we can sketch trig graphs in radians. Um, let's take a, let's just make one up. How would we sketch, how would we sketch tan, should we make it awkward, tan of uh, theta minus pi over 4. So sketch y equals tan of theta minus pi over 4. And let's do it between 0 theta, and 360. Well, it's very simple. What you guys, well, what you should all know how to do is sketch the tan graph between 0 and 360. Not this one, because it's obviously going to be a transformation. But let's at least look at the tan graph of what we know. So we know it looks like this, like this, and then like this. So that's going to be 360. This is 270, this is 180, this here is 90. We obviously have zero here. Then there would be an asymptote here at minus 90. Obviously, we're doing this in radians, so I shouldn't really say 360, right? I should say 2 pi. But from here, yeah, we should start thinking about the radian, all right? So this is just our, you know, something that we just know in degrees. But obviously going to start doing this in radians. But I'm going to keep it like this just so we can conceptualize what's going on because you guys are very used to using um, degrees. It's like going from using controller your whole life on PlayStation to going to use keyboard and mouse. All right. 
So you guys are just too used to using controller. You might want to use a controller even when playing on PC, which is what I do. All right. So big up the metaphor in that. So tan of theta minus pi over 4. The first issue here is that this angle is different to this one. So we're going to do something is modifying the range. So that this angle reflects what we have here. So we, have, we want it to say theta minus pi over 4. So to all of these, I'm going to minus pi over 4. Okay, so 0 minus pi over 4 is minus pi over 4. Then here, I'm just minusing pi over 4. So theta, whoops, theta minus pi over 4. And 2 pi, when you minus pi over 4, so 2 minus a quarter is 3 quarters. So 3 pi over 4. Now, when you start off, guys, you can just think of this as saying, all right, look, I know this is 360, and I know this is 45 degrees. Yeah? So, I need to sketch the tan graph, just the ordinary tan graph, within this range. Because theta minus pi over 4, think about your functions, theta minus pi over 4 actually shifts the tan graph to the right by pi over 4. So, what we're going to do is within the modified range, we're going to draw the tan graph and only the appropriate section that is going to move it to the right by pi over 4. So this stops you guys from drawing too much. Okay? All right. How do we do that? Let's look over here. Now remember, this is minus 45 degrees. And this is going to be, remember, what did we do? We did 2 pi minus pi over 4. So we did uh, 360 minus 45, which is 315. Okay? So let's look at the tan graph we drew here, where would minus 45 degrees be? It would be over here. So this is the start of my tan graph. Now, if you type that in the calculator, that's going to give you minus 1. So 45 is in between minus 90 and 0. 315 is going to be similarly in between 270 and 360. Yeah, 45 is between the asymptote and 0 here. 315 is going to be between the asymptote and 360. Which means this point here is going to be in line with um, minus 45. So between these two points is what I want, and I'm going to shift that to the right by pi over 4. So that means I don't need this part of the graph. And I don't need this part of the graph. And this is where this is a cool trick. What ends up happening is, do you know this minus pi over 4? Essentially what you're doing is you're actually subtracting the axes. So this y-axis, I'm just moving it back pi over 4, so it would just be over here. And that will be my answer. Like that. That there is the graph. So I'm just going to line things up. So now, remember, it's at the bottom here, at minus 1. Okay, then it's kind of doing this. Then we have our asymptote. We'll figure out the numbers in a second. So that's this one. Then we get one full wave. Then we have our asymptote. Then lining this one up at 360, we have that flick down. There's your answer. Okay. We just need some values. So at zero, remember we're adding pi over four. So at zero, when you add pi over four, this is just pi over four. This one was at 180. Remember, guys, 180 is pi. So when we add pi over 4, we get 5 pi over 4. You could also think of it as something's happening every 90 degrees. Yeah? Something happening every 90 degrees means we're adding pi over 2. Yeah, we're adding pi over 2 to get to each uh, important point, which is 2 pi over 4. So I'm just adding 2 pi. So this here would be theta is 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. 3 pi plus 2 pi is 5 pi. So this part here will be um, uh, when you add 2 pi is 7 pi over 4. And in between here and here is 45. So this is where we get to our 2 pi. And there you go. There's your graph. That is a beautiful graph. So don't forget, guys, to modify your range. Uh, that will help you sketch these graphs much easier. But yeah, guys, this was basically a whole freestyle. Did I stutter? I don't think so. But guys, if you learned something today, um, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more mass content, and you can submit questions in the Lungang Reddit link below. And if you're interested in my A-level mass courses, details are also in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.